In this video, you'll learn how to make your brain work better. Can we enhance the way our brains work? Have you tried listening to classical music, reading, or keeping a diary of daily events to make your memories happy? These chapters will help you better understand how your brain works so that you can find new and interesting ways to make it better. These rules of the mind give you insight into how exercise makes our minds healthier and happier, how sleep is more important than just a requirement, and how it can absorb and maintain all its things. Awareness is the best way to learn information. All in all, the more you know, the better your mind will be. In these chapters, you'll find out how amputees see their lost limbs by looking in a mirror, why can a Russian journalist remembers random numbers 15 years later, and why you need to likely hit the sack early tonight. Regular exercise awakens the body to recharge itself and produces hormones to help the brain work. Have you ever wondered what a day in the life of Homo sapiens looks like? How our ancestors spent their time has a direct effect on how our own brains develop. Consider that the average Homo sapiens can travel 10 to 20 kilometers a day. This means that our brain did not develop when we were lazing about, but as we tone it. Exercise permits your body to get more energy from your food. At the point when you work out, you provide bloodstream to all the tissues of your body. What's more, like your bloodstream provides, fresh blood vessels start to shape in your body, making it simpler for your blood to manage its work, for example, moving nutrients and minerals and eliminating waste. Be saved. So when you move your body, in addition to the fact that you feel better you think all the more effectively. To more readily comprehend what's going on in this cycle, think about the street framework. In the mid-1800s, an English architect saw that merchants were getting unsanitary soil in the city. He formulated an approach to clear streets with stones and rocks to make them more dependable. The engineer's idea spread rapidly when people realized that better roads generally have better access to goods. That's how you improve your body when you exercise because your blood vessels are your body's arteries. Exercise keeps your body's tissues healthy by producing certain hormones, such as the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF. One of the most powerful growth hormones in the brain, BDNF keeps your neurons fresh and healthy and enhances communication between neurons. It also stimulates the creation of new cells. So the more you exercise, the healthier your mind and body will be. You have a natural rest cycle that is individual to you. Follow it and you'll feel and think better. From the improvement point of view, sleep is dangerous because it preys on us. If we are willing to take such a serious risk on a daily basis, it is because sleep is essential. But what does sleep really do? Simply put, sleep refreshes our mind and body. When you don't get enough sleep, your mind and body keep going. And if you don't get enough sleep in a week, then you will be in sleep debt the next day. One study analyzed a group of soldiers answering for operating complex military hardware. The researchers kept the soldiers wide awake for one night, then forced them to pass a scientific test the next day. Lack of sleep for just one night resulted in a 30% loss of overall cognitive ability, while two nights of sleep decreased by 60%. Another study introduced that when a person slept only for six hours or less for five nights, their cognitive variation was lower than that of a person who was kept awake for 48 consecutive hours. Everyone has a specific sleep schedule. There is a natural preference that is unique to them, and research has shown that people who stick to their natural cycle generally have strong cognitive capabilities. There are three types of sleeping patterns, larks, owls, and hummingbirds. People often get up before 6 a.m. and this is the highest warning before noon. Some 10% of the population is classified. Potatoes, on the other hand, rarely hit before morning, which was monitored around 5 p.m. Potatoes also make up 10% of the population. The rest of us are hummingbirds, which vary between the other two species. We're late sometimes. We get up before sunrise sometimes. So take care of yourself and have enough sleep. It benefits your brain to work better. Chronic stress weakens, causing you to think badly and lose memory. Reduce stress wherever possible. You may have heard the answer to fight or flight. We experience this in response to stressful situations and ideally this response helps us stay out of danger. This is how stress motivates us to guard ourselves. It can also save our lives. Still, chronic stress is effective. When people become used to facing stress, they often lose control. When faced with problems, they become helpless. 
depressed people also stop learning. Psychologist Martin Seligman gave an example of a series of trials in the late 1960s that identified a condition we now know as a learning disability. Seligman's subjects were different groups of dogs, who were given daily electric shocks. Dogs that feel regular tremors cry first and try to fight. As the quake intensified, preparations for the fight against the dog diminished. In the next step, the Seligman places the dog in a box from which he can avoid trauma if he wishes. Yet the dog did not do so, instead of barking and barking in the corner. He assumed that earthquakes were inevitable, and he made no attempt to escape. Having this kind of chronic stress damages all kinds of academic ability. People with historical stress may not be able to experience math or language effectively and may have difficulty concentrating. Adults with chronic stress also shamble with memory, doing 50% less on memory tests. They also have bad executive work, which is involved in problem solving and self-control. So while a little pressure can help you make a move, an excessive amount of pressure is unfavorable to your general well-being. Your mind focuses on upgrades it considers the most significant. The rest is simply noise. As you read these chapters, millions of sensory neurons are simultaneously firing into your brain. Each is attempting to catch your eye, however a couple of achievements to your cognizance. You won't really see the rest. Can you see where your feet are exactly now? You probably won't be till you read this sentence. Before that, thinking about your feet was not a detail that was exactly important to your brain. Your brain has to decide precisely how much consideration it pays to it. We have numerous information frameworks that assist us with recognizing dangers, openings, and examples. Our minds need such capacities to endure and flourish. In the event that our progenitors couldn't avoid hunters or discover nomates, they would not have the option to effectively pass on their qualities. This is the reason our minds pick significant data that is prepared further and leave out the remainder of the subtleties. On the off chance that your brain was not all that particular, you would essentially be overpowered and potentially incapable to work. Here's a sample. Attempt to recollect the accompanying words, waterproof shell, shoes, shades, umbrella, bathing suit, and boots. Presently attempt to recall similar words when you partition them into organized gatherings. Seashore gear, shades, bathing suit, and shoes. Downpour gear, umbrella, waterproof shell, and boots. The examination has indicated that when we bunch words this way, we recollect them 40% better. At the end of the day, your cerebrum measures data better if the data it is taken care of is significant. Direct your cerebrum toward significant things, else, you'll end up occupied by other necessary subtleties. Remember this when you present data to other people. In the event that you need your crowd to focus on an introduction, for instance, hold it under 10 minutes, the abundance of data will overburden the personalities of your crowd. Every brain is wired in a different way. What you experience in life helps build your nervous system. Michael Jordan, one of the top ball major parts ever, quit basketball in 1994 and took up baseball. Shockingly, he flopped pitiably. You may feel that somebody as athletic as Jordan could rule in any game, yet baseball demonstrated excessive difficulty. So he returned to what his mind and muscles utilized to, that is basketball. Our encounters don't simply change our minds, however, is a real sense to rework them. A group of neurosurgeons represented this in a test where they indicated a man various pictures while planning which neurons terminated because of specific pictures. At the point when the man took a gander at an image of Jennifer Aniston, the group saw that a specific neuron terminated in his mind. That equivalent neuron terminated when invigorated by seven different pictures of Aniston, yet stayed lethargic for the 80 different pictures the man appeared. Presently, we haven't advanced to have a neuron that illuminates when Jennifer Aniston is spotted. All things considered, our minds are so touchy to outer sources of info that they truly rework themselves to adjust. The exploration subject was certifiably not an enormous Jennifer Aniston fan, by the same token. His cerebrum had recently adjusted to the data he'd handled at some time about her. Our brains create as we learn, and they create at various rates, as well. Strangely, the human mind is just somewhat developed upon entering the world. Its greatest improvement projects proceed into our mid-20s, with unpretentious changes expanding admirably into our 40s. Think about this, about 10% of individuals don't have minds that are adequately wired for perusing at 6 years old. The variety in the cerebrums of kids is very extraordinary. 
So for what reason do schools anticipate that each youngster should learn in a similar style and simultaneously? So we've discovered that you're considerably more liable to be effective in your general vicinity of obtained ability. That is the reason Michael Jordan wasn't good at baseball, as his cerebrum wasn't wired for it. Our brains store data if it's meaningful and doesn't meddle with other data. Solomon Shuryshevsky was a Russian journalist brought into the world in 1886, who was once given an equation of 30 letters and numbers could in any case review the numbers somewhere in the range of 15 years after the fact. Shuryshevsky's strong memory included some significant downfalls. He could remember irregular data, however, he was unable to sort out the data into important examples. He could see all the words in a book independently, yet he was unable to sort out what they implied when assembled. Reword to Shuryshevsky, data should be significant for our cerebrums to recollect it. In the event that you need to retain a piece of data, make it more significant by rehashing the data to yourself at divided spans. This implies you would rehash it like clockwork throughout the span of two hours, as only one model. 19th century German therapist Hermann Ebbinghaus found that understudies normally fail to remember 90% of what they realize in a class inside 30 days. Nonetheless, he demonstrated that understudies could recollect data all the more effective when they rehashed it again and again on normal occasions. Separated stretches cause your brain to understand that the data you're rehashing and its handling is significant. It should be significant, your mind thinks, or you wouldn't remember it so frequently. What's more, when your brain connects significance to something, it recollects that better. There's another significant test of learning, in that when you retain new data, it may really supplant data you've just put away. Proof recommends that when we consider our drawn-out recollections, they enter our momentary memory once more. This implies that these recollections can basically be displaced by other data we'd prefer to store in long-haul memory. This is important for the explanation that considering an unknown dialect is regularly tested. At the point when you remember a specific word, for instance, a word that is spelled also that you have in long-haul memory may effectively get displaced by that word from your momentary memory. So in case you're an instructor, don't simply show your understudies another thing and afterward proceed onward. Your understudy should be helped to remember that new material like clockwork to genuinely learn it. Our senses are ready to work together. A multi-center environment can help you learn better. Would you be able to listen to music while you study? On the off chance that you can, it's most likely in light of the fact that your brain has developed to have the option to do as such. Once more, consider the existence of our ancestors. Our Homo sapiens ancestors didn't go through their days wisely painting in caves without interruption. All things being equal, their brain needed to deal with various upgrades on the double, regardless of whether visual, oral, olfactory, or material. Our brains have groundbreaking integrative impulses, which means they can learn through different faculties immediately. Indeed, when different faculties are animated simultaneously, their abilities increment. A specific report had members watching a video of an individual talking, yet without sound. Curiously, the regions of the members' minds liable for sound preparation were invigorated, similarly as though they were hearing the individual in the video talk. However, when indicated a video of an individual simply making faces without sound, the members' hearable cortex was dormant. As such, visual upgrades can enact the pieces of our minds that ordinarily handle sound. Our faculties are associated, they invigorate one another. We don't learn too well in unique circumstances, in which just one sense is used. Cognitive psychologist Richard Meyer found this while looking at the connection between learning and interactive media openness. In his experience, Meyer divided some information into three groups. The first group has just heard. The other just saw it. And the third group heard and saw this information for both of them. The study found that the third group was much better at memorizing the information they were learning. The advantages of multisensory experiments may seem contradictory. Wouldn't the brain lift more weight with more competitive information? Yet our brains do not work that way. Research has shown that they favor heavy lifting. So put yourself in front of multi-center learning tools. Don't hesitate to watch YouTube videos about economics or physics instead of reading your textbook, as this can help you learn too. Combine vision with visual information to better remember facts. Our visual sense is powerful. Vision is a powerful sensation, which allows our other senses to be stimulated in different ways. A group of researchers learned this by pulling the wool over the eyes of some wine experts. 
The researchers wanted to see if the taste of wine could tell the difference between red wine and white wine. This shows that they could not do so. When taste drank the colored whites, they thought they were a red wine. Smell the sound of vision. In some other experiments, participants were shown off 2,500 maps for 10 seconds. After several days, participants can recall the images with 90% accuracy. A year later, the exactness rate was very high, about 1%. Yet when people hear information, they only remember about 10% of it after 3 days. Even so, if a symbol is attended by spoken information, people will remember 65% of the information after that period. Called the effect of image superiority, it is an effect that scientists pointed out more than 100 years ago. The effect of reflective superiority is that our ideology influences our thoughts more than any other impression. To prove that vision is stronger than touch, researchers have analyzed the visual and haptic senses of empathy. In one examination, an amputee sat before a mirror put on a table in a style that when the subject moved with a specific goal in mind, the reflection made it look as though he had recovered his removed arm. At the point when the subject saw the reflection, his visual faculties overwhelmed his haptic faculties. He abruptly felt a phantom left arm, much the same as he saw the left arm in the mirror. Final Summary The key message of this book. The human brain is a sophisticated information transfer system. Improve your mind by understanding better work. Exercise, get enough sleep, and avoid chronic stress. Take advantage of multi-screen learning and major lead effects. By doing this, you will maximize your intellectual capacity. Here is what you can implement starting today. Provide meaningful information so people can remember. In case you're giving a talk, keep it short so individuals aren't overburdened. Likewise, offer them the chance to take in the data with more than one sense, don't simply talk, yet add visuals or sound to your introduction. You like what you hear? Check out other personal development or business books. This video was made possible by your support. It takes a very long time to make one of our videos, so thanks to your contributions on Patreon and watching our videos. We are slowly able to do more and more of them. If you want to help us out, check out the Patreon page. If you like the contents of this video, check out other books in the description and suggest what book we should cover next.